This week on Command N, Google pluses and minuses, how to Twitterize yourself, and our new host. Welcome to episode 241 of Command N. I'm Amber. I'm here at the Confederation Center of the Arts Art Gallery in Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island at the Free Parking Exhibit. So thank you so much to them for letting us shoot here. We have a brand new season of Command N and some exciting news. We have a new team member, Lara Killian, who has loads of experience online as a podcaster with Dating Digital, as a blogger with PopMatters.com, and of course, she is a frequent user of the top social media websites. So let's kick off the show with Jeff and Lara as they talk about Google+. That's it. We're starting our own circle of trust. And guess what? You're not in it. Well, you can't start a circle of trust. It's my circle. You know what? You don't have a patent on the circle, Jack. So Google Plus is the newest social network out there. And in just a bit over two weeks, they've gotten over 10 million different people signed up for it. So that's quite an uptake. Uh, Lara, why don't you tell us a bit about Google Plus? Definitely. So basically, Google Plus takes some of the best features of Facebook and Twitter, pairs it really with a much cleaner interface, and uh, allows more flexibility for how you organize your network and your connections, as well as really allowing users to have very flexible, granular privacy controls. Yeah, and the, the things you'll see in common are plus ones are very much like Facebook likes. You can share information, like you can retweet uh, other people's posts on Twitter, things like that. But there's some great new features, like being able to mute conversation threads and stuff like that. And it's all broken down into four big areas. So you've got your home, your photos, your profile, and circles. And circles is really the big new thing here, I think. Yeah, this is where it really differs from Facebook. So with circles, Google has pre-suggested some mini groups within your larger network that you might want to categorize people into. So you have your family, your friends and acquaintances, for example. But I also really like that you can create your own circles, I believe as many as you want, uh, that you can describe to uh, contain other components of your network and really think carefully about who you want to share your content with. Yeah, and who you want to share, for, who you want to keep from getting, again, the noise that so drowns out things like Facebook. Uh, one of the great new features, I think, is the Hangout area for video chats. And this is, this is pretty cool. We tried it out uh, earlier and uh, works really well. So basically, you can have a simultaneous video chat with up to 10 people, including you, so nine of your friends. You just uh, post to your stream, which is basically like your wall in Facebook, say that you're hanging out, other people can join you, but you can control which of your circles you uh, tell that information to. So if you just want it to be a hangout with your family, you can just share it with your family. Anybody who's available can jump on right then. You can have a text chat along the side. You can simultaneously watch a YouTube video together, which is an extremely cool really feature. Cool. Yeah, and I think it's, it's really interesting to see, you know, with Microsoft purchasing Skype recently and now Skype being integrated into Facebook and Facebook changing some of these communications between your different friends. Uh, I think it's interesting to see all these big players sort of moving in step, realizing that, okay, these are the features we want to get down. I definitely think Google Plus has, has nailed this Hangout feature. I think it's really m my big plus for the platform. Definitely. I would say that for me, one of the downsides to uh, Google Plus at this, at, for now is the Sparks function. So basically, you can create kind of a customized search, live search within Google Plus, where it'll, if you save the search, it'll show on your sidebar that this is something you're interested in, for example, a hobby, something pertinent to your work. And then people who are looking at your profile can see what searches you've saved and look at that information as well. I'm not really sure uh, why I would want to use this as opposed to the RSS readers that I already make good use of or uh, just doing a basic Google search outside of Google+. Plus. I'm not sure what uh, additional value this has. It doesn't really fit into the social media side. It's kind of because it's Google, they're going to do this. I, I, I don't really see the value in it as well. Uh, and you know, there's, there's bugs all over the platform. It's very young. I think in the end, uh, it's going to be hard for me to ever let go of Twitter. I think its value is the 140 characters. And, and with somebody with limited time, that's what really appeals to me. But uh, I think ultimately, Google Plus will, uh, it, it benefits now from having no ads, no games, beautiful interface. But the place where Facebook wins out is uh, my mom's on Facebook. So we'll have to see how that changes as time goes on.
As you may know, I am a huge fan of infographics, visual designs that allow you to tell a story. Now you can create your own custom infographics using a new tool that just launched called Visually. With Visually, you can do a few different things. Right now, you have the ability to input your Twitter data and compare yourself against other people who you tweet alongside. It's a whole lot of fun and it's completely free. Now we're going to check in with Jeff as he reviews a very cool iPad stand. This episode, I'm reviewing the Chill Tab 2 aluminum tablet stand. This is from Chillbed Industries, and you can see it at chillbeds.com. It's a great stand for an iPad or any other tablet or, or even handheld that has some padded supports here so you're not going to damage your device and a hole that you can feed a charging cable through, which makes it a great sort of stand to set things on just as you're leaving them to sit there. And the biggest advantage for me is I can put my iPad in it without taking the case off. I didn't get a case to take it on and off my iPad, so that's a huge advantage. The best part of this is that if you're sitting at the table reading your iPad over eating cereal at breakfast or, or typing things in on it, the level that it raises the iPad to and the height it raises it to is, is far above what most stands are able to do, most built-in uh, case stands, and it really makes it a much more pleasurable experience to be reading on it because it's more in your eye line. You can turn it sideways, it can fit on that way as well. The screen doesn't, the stand allows you to tap the screen without it rocking too much so, so you don't have to worry about not being able to use your iPad in it, it doesn't become just a picture frame. And uh, yeah, all in all I, I think it's a great handy little device, it's super simple, it costs $40 and you can find it at chillbeds.com. That's all for this episode, as always you can find us online at commandn.tv. Follow us on Twitter at Command N. Or you can check out our Facebook page. Thanks for watching. This week on Command N. Google pluses and minuses. How to Twitterize yourself. Uh oh. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go up here. I forgot it was my line. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> the long dramatic pauses don't work so well in the T's, Jeff. Just FYI. <laughs>